Sutra. This is a drought ghost that in its old age has become a demon. It disturbs and confuses the good person, but when it ties of doing so, it will leave the other person's body. Then both the disciples and the teacher will get in trouble with the law. Commentary This is a drought ghost that in its old age has become a demon. Wherever a drought ghost goes, there will be no rainfall. The drought will last at least six months and it may go on for one, two, three or five years. As long as the ghost is in the area, there will be no rain. While young, it is a ghost, but as, is, as it ages, it becomes more crafty and villainous and turns into a demon. A derogatory proverb about old people says to be old and not to have died is to be a rascal. That is even more the case with ghosts. If a ghost grows old and doesn't die, it becomes a demon. It disturbs and confuses the good person, but when it ties off doing so, after it has played its tricks for a long time, the demon becomes bored with the whole affair. Having lost interest, it will leave the other person's body. Then both the disciples and the teacher will get in trouble with the law. They are arrested and put in prison. They may be executed or face life imprisonment. It is just as if they were in the house. Sutra, you should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall into the relentless house. Commentary, you should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the demon king's cycle of transmigration. Don't join the demonstrating you. If you are confused and do not understand, if you don't recognize the workings of the demon king, then you will follow the demon king and fall into the relentless house. Sutra further, in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone, this good person is untroubled by any different mental state and experiences perfect bright concentration. Within somebody, his mind craves spiritual oneness, so he clarifies his concentrated thought as he greedily seeks for union. Commentary further in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone. This good person is untroubled by any different mental state and experiences perfect bright concentration. Within samadhi, his mind craves spiritual oneness. He wants to join in close connection with all sages, so he clarifies his concentrated thought as he greedily seeks for union. He forcefully uses subtle thoughts that have been settled and made clear. Because of his one secret thought of craving for union, he gives the demon king a chance to come and disturb him. Sutra, at that time, a demon from the heavens senses the opportunity it has been waiting for. Its spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to spout the sutras and the dharma. Commentary The demon sees its trance, so it dispatches a spirit that quickly possesses a person and speaks the dharma through him. Sutra, this person, unaware that he is actually possessed by a demon, claims he has reached unsurpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks union, he arranges a seat and speaks the Dharma. Neither his own body nor the bodies of those listening to the Dharma go through any external transformations. But he makes the minds of the listeners become enlightened before they listen to the Dharma. So the experience changes in every thought. They may have the knowledge of past lives or the knowledge of others' thoughts. They may see the house or know all the good and evil events in the human realm. They may speak verses or spontaneously recite sutras. Each person is elated 
and feels he has obtained something unprecedented. Commentary: This possessed person is unaware that he is actually possessed by a demon. He claims he has reached the wondrous fruition of unsurpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person, the cultivator who seeks union, he arranges a dharma seed, ascends it, and speaks the dharma. Neither his own body nor the bodies of those listening to the dharma go through any external transformations. His own appearance does not change, nor do the appearances of his listeners change. Nothing happens on the outside. It is not as in a previous passage, where the listeners saw themselves sitting on precious lotus flowers, or saw their own bodies radiating purple golden light. Nor is it as when they saw the person speaking dharma change into a bishu, a bishuni, chakra, a woman, and so forth. There are no such transformations. But instead, he makes the minds of the listeners become enlightened before they listen to the dharma. After their enlightenment, they feel as if they are drunk or having a dream in which they strike it rich. This enlightenment is not true enlightenment. It is an illusory state, like watching a movie or taking an hallucinogenic drug. They see everything in an altered state, so that in their minds they experience changes in every thought. They may have the knowledge of past lives, but again, the knowledge of past lives that they attain is not real. What they see is totally illusory. Or they may have the knowledge of others' thoughts. They may see all of the states in their house, or they may know all the good and evil events in the human realm. They may casually be able to speak verses on their own, or they may spontaneously recite sutras. Each person is elated and feels he has obtained something unprecedented. They all say, "He truly is a bodhisattva. He is really a Buddha. He has made me enlightened. He has given me the power of knowing past lives." However, the experience lasts only while they are listening to the drama. That is why it is not genuine. May nineteen eighty nine, lay person, venerable master, drama masters, and good advisers. I'd like to share something which is closely related to everyone's cultivation. When the feeling skanda comes to an end, the cultivator tends to be in a state of anxiety in which he craves clever and skillful expedients. He wants to merge with the cosmic principle, unite with the potentials, and convert living beings. When he has this kind of anxiety, several things may happen. For example, some people who have never read sutras before will become possessed by demons, and they then they will be able to explain many sutras. There are many cultivators in Taiwan who have read. Very little of the sutras, and who may have violated the substance of the precepts they received. Yet they want to obtain clever and skillful expedients. When they see other people explaining sutras and gaining a large following, they hope to quickly attain wisdom themselves, so that they can also explain sutras to many people. Having such a thought, they become possessed by demons as they sit in meditation. Many people who seem to be very good at explaining sutras are actually possessed by demons. Of course, if a person strictly follows the precepts, diligently recites mantras and sutras, and cultivates it very hard, then he may not be possessed. However, there are some people who are very casual about holding precepts and who do not recite sutras or bow to the Buddhas. Yet, when they go On stage and close their eyes. After two or three days, not only they themselves, but also those in the audience who gave rise to false thinking, will be able to lecture very well on the sutras without having studied them before. I don't think this will happen at the venerable master's way places. If you go to other way places where the dharma protecting spirits don't do a good job. And you give rise to false thinking and greedy attachments, then you may have these days, especially if you like to meditate. 
People who don't meditate usually don't have these days. But there is an elderly woman in Taiwan who was basically illiterate. But after three or five days, she could write beautiful Chinese calligraphy. I've seen many cases like this, where people suddenly become Buddhas in a few days' time. That woman had not been able to explain sutras before, but after three days, she was very good at explaining them. Such strange things really happen. That is why everyone wants to learn Devan dharmas, and no one wants to learn the proper dharma. If you explain the Buddha dharma to them, they won't listen. Those of us here are probably more aware of such phenomena. These days, it probably won't happen to people at this way place. But you have to be careful when you go out. Venerable Master, these are all cases of people being possessed by false spirits. This is what is meant by "is spirit possesses a person." Sutra. A good person is beguiled and fooled into thinking the other is a bodhisattva. His thoughts become entangled in love. He breaks the Buddha's moral precepts and covertly indulges his greedy desires. Commentary: The good person is beguiled and fooled into thinking the other is a bodhisattva. The cultivator is extremely stupid and thinks. The possessed person is a bodhisattva. His thoughts become entangled in love. He falls in love with the demon. He breaks the Buddha's moral precepts, not abiding by them, and covertly indulges his greedy desires. He has a licentious licentious relations on the sly. Licentious relations on the sly. Sutra is fond of saying that there are greater Buddhas and lesser Buddhas, earlier Buddhas and later Buddhas. That among them are true Buddhas and false Buddhas, male Buddhas and female Buddhas, and that the same is true of Bodhisattvas. When people witness this, their initial reserve is washed away, and they easily get carried away with their wrong understanding. Commentary: He is fond of saying that there are greater Buddhas and lesser Buddhas. What does this demon like to say? He says, "You people study the Buddha Dharma, but do you know that Buddhas are all about? There are great Buddhas and small Buddhas, old Buddhas and young Buddhas." He further elaborates that. There are earlier Buddhas and later Buddhas. That among them are true Buddhas and false Buddhas. The demon king claims that he is a true Buddha, while other Buddhas are false Buddhas. He also says that there are male Buddhas and female Buddhas. He insists intercourse between men and women creates Buddhas. It is the origin of Buddhas. It is the body mind. Of course, this confuses people. They think, "Oh, so that's how one becomes a Buddha," and then they indulge in wide debauchery. They Would rather die than not engage in lust. And he says that the same is true of bodhisattvas, maintaining that there are great and small bodhisattvas, and male and female ones too. Actually, anyone who becomes a Buddha or a bodhisattva is male. There are no female Buddhas or bodhisattvas. Kuan Yin Bodhisattva may manifest in the form of a woman in order to teach and rescue women. When people witness this and hear him saying such things, they think he's right. I always see Kuan Yin Bodhisattva depicted as a female. That's proof right there. Such people do not understand the Buddha Dharma. Kuan Yin Bodhisattva is neither male nor female. The Bodhisattva responds to each living being and appears in an appropriate form to teach and transform that being. It is very difficult to distinguish manifestations of Bodhisattvas from manifestations of demons, because demons also have spiritual powers and the ability to transform themselves. How can you tell if someone is a demon? Observe to see whether he has lust or greed. Their initial resolve is washed away. They change their minds and forsake 
they are original reserve to cultivate and they easily get carried away with, with their wrong understanding. Sutra, this is a male ghost that in its old age has become a demon. It disturbs and confuses the good person. But when it ties up doing so, it will leave the other person's body. Then both the disciples and the teacher will get in trouble with the law. Commentary. This is a male ghost, a ghost that falls, in, in, falls into the category of Li Mei and Wang Liang ghosts that in its old age has become a demon. It disturbs and confuses the good person who is cultivating samadhi. But when it ties up doing so eventually, it will leave the other person's body. Then both the disciples and the teacher will get in trouble with the law. They will be arrested and imprisoned. Sutra, you should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall into the relentless house. Commentary, you should be aware of this in advance and not, not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. You should wake up at the very start and avoid answering the Demon King cycle of rebirth. If you lack like wisdom and are confused and you do not understand what is going on, you will fall into the relentless house. Sutra Further, in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone, this good person is untroubled by any deviant mental state and experiences perfect bright concentration. Within somebody, his mind craves to know the origins of things, or so he exhaustively investigates the nature of physical things and their changes from beginning to end. He intensifies the keenness of his thoughts as he greedily seeks to analyze things. Commentary Further, in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone. This good person who is cultivating somebody is untroubled by any definite mental state and experiences perfect bright concentration. Within somebody, his mind craves to know the origins of things. He decides that he wants to study the principles of the physical world. So he exhaustively investigates the nature of physical things and their changes and transformations from beginning to end to find out what they are all about. He intensifies the keenness of his thoughts, honing his mental concentration as he greedily seeks to analyze, differentiate and understand things in the physical world. Sutra, at that time, a demon from the heavens senses the opportunity it has been waiting for. Its spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to espouse the sutras and the dharma. Commentary, at that time, a demon from the heavens sees him and says, Aha, you've had a greedy thought. Great, now I can send one of my retinue to snag you. And so it says it's the op opportunity it has been waiting for. Once again, the demon king sends one of his followers and his spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to espout the sutras and speak the drama of the demon king. January 1983 Disciple I've noticed that every state of thinking skanda begins with the phrase in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone, he is untroubled by any devon mental state. What does the phrase untroubled by any devon mental state mean? Does it mean the person is without devon knowledge and views, or does it mean that he does not have improper thoughts? When the cultivator reaches this level, what is the, his state like? Vulnerable Master in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone. There has to be unhindered clarity for it to be wonderful and it must be wonderful for there to be unhindered clarity. When he attains this state in the feeling skanda, 
he feels very much at ease. He is untroubled by any different mental state. That means he doesn't encounter any such state. If he has some skill in the feeling skanda, he basically shouldn't encounter any different mental state. And yet, for no apparent reason, he does encounter one. This different mental state is a thief from outside, a different demon, ghost, or freak that comes from outside. Originally, he shouldn't have encountered such things, but in the end, he had thoughts of love, seeking greedy selfishness or self-benefit. Having reverted to these old forms, he encountered those beings. If he didn't have these old forms, he would be able to continue making progress. If you understand all the states that come up without being swayed by them, then you won't be troubled by different mental states. As soon as you are turned by a state, however, it will be able to trouble you. Basically, he isn't supposed to be troubled by different mental states and yet he gets turned. Is this a contradiction? A contradiction? No, it's because his thought of desire has opened the door to thieves. He covertly indulges his greedy desires. He sneaks around engaging in immortal, immoral conduct and does not abide by the rules and precepts. He says, what do precepts matter? And claims to be enlightened. I don't dare to transgress the rules because I'm not enlightened. Sutra, this person unaware that he is possessed by a demon, claims he has reached, he has reached and surpassed Nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks to know the origins of things, he arranges a seat and speaks the Dharma. His body has an awesome spiritual quality which subdues the seeker. He makes the minds of those gathered beside his seat spontaneously complain, even before they have heard the Dharma. He says to all those people that the Buddha's Nirvana body and Dharma body are there before them in the form of his own physical body. He says, the successive begetting of fathers and sons from generation to generation is itself the Dharma body, which is permanent and never-ending. What you see right now are those very Buddha lands. There are no other pure dwellings or golden features. Commentary. This is really a case of everyone being a Buddha. That's just the approach this demon uses. This person is unaware that he is possessed by a demon. He doesn't have any idea that he has been caught by a demon because he gets muddled and loses awareness when he becomes possessed. A demon takes total control and becomes his spoken man, spokesman. He claims he has reached the unsurpassed wondrous version of Nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks to know the origins of things, who seeks thorough understanding of the physical world, he arranges a seat and speaks the Dharma. He is the demon king's body has an awesome spiritual quality which subdues the seeker, the good person who seeks the source. He makes the minds of this person and of those gathered beside his seat spontaneously compliant, and even before they have heard the drama, their minds are already subdued and respectful. He says to all those people that the Buddha's Nirvana body and drama body are there before them in the form of his own physical body. He says, what are Bodhi and Nirvana? They are right here in my flesh body. The successive begetting of fathers and sons from generation to generation is itself the Dharma body which is permanent and never-ending. Fathers beget sons and the sons grow up to become fathers who in turn beget sons. This succession of generations is the permanent indestructible Dharma body. What you see right now are those very Buddha lands. These now are the Buddha's lands. There are no other pure dwellings or golden features. There aren't any other pure lands to dwell in or any other golden appearances. 
These are all for me. That's how he talks. He talks he has a ghostly quality and uh, a demonic quality. Don't I often use the expression demonic energy? This is what demonic energy is because he has a demonic energy from the demon possessing him. People are taken in by what he says. Sutra, those people believe and accept his words, forgetting their initial resolve. They offer up their lives, feeling they have obtained something unprecedented. They are all beguiled and confused into thinking he is a Bodhisattva. As they pursue his ideas, they break the Buddha's moral precepts and covertly indulge their greedy desires. Commentary Those people believe and accept his words. When they hear him speak, speaking such principles, they say, That makes sense. Fathers beget sons, and the sons in turn beget their sons, generation after generation. That's the permanent and indestructible Dharma body. That's actually the way it is. They all believe it, forgetting their initial resolve. They lose their former proper outlook and proper thought. Their faith in the demon king is far stronger than their faith in the proper Dharma. When demon kings and heterodox, heterodox sects tell them what to do, they don't dare disobey. When a true teacher tells them to do something, they waver between doubt and belief. The demon king confuses them with his demonic power so that they believe whatever it says. If you told a demon king to lecture on this sutra, he would not do it. Why not? As soon as he did, his true identity would be exposed. That's why I said that if you asked certain people in America who falsely claim to be experts in the Buddha drama to explain, to explain this sutra, they wouldn't dare to do it. They're afraid of being exposed. They offer up their bodies and lives to the demon king, feeling they have obtained something unprecedented. They are all beguiled and confused into thinking he is a bodhisattva. They are truly pitiable. They think the demon is a bodhisattva as they pursue his ideas, studying with the demon and learning his magic. They no longer maintain but instead break the Buddha's moral precepts and covertly indulge their greedy desires. They secretly indulge in lust. Sutra is fond of saying that the eyes, ears, nose, and tongue are the pure land and that the male and female organs are the true place of Bodhi and Nirvana. Ignorant people believe these filthy words. Commentary How terrible this demon king is! He is fond of saying that the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind are the pure land. You don't have to look anywhere else for the Dharma door of the pure land. He tells them, it's just the six sense faculties. And he also says that the male and female organs are the seeds of body, the true place of body and nirvana. Can you imagine speaking like that? Ignorant people believe these filthy words. People without any knowledge or wisdom say, oh, I've never seen or heard anything like this before. So that's what body and nirvana are. With a total disregard for their own lives, they race along the road to death for all they are worth. They believe in such impure talk.